Good morning, Matt here from West Coast Shaving's Daily Shave video series. And for today's daily shave, I'm gonna be doing another vintage straight razor shave. And for today's video, I'm gonna focus on how to shave with sensitive skin, how to shave with sensitive skin. So if you're like me, um, and a lot of times, a lot of products, wet shaving products, a lot of ways of shaving can cause irritation, cause sensitive skin. I'm going to give some tips in this video how to avoid having an irritating shave and um, some tips for people with sensitive skin. So with that, I'll go through the product lineup. So I'm going to be using my vintage uh, 5 8 um, Blue Steel Special. This is a Kinfolks razor, American steel, made in the 1950s. Uh, square point razor, full hollow, 5 8 I'll be using Holy Cow. Fern Concerto. This is one of my favorite scents from Holy Cow. It's, I think, based on a men's cologne, a classic men's cologne, Eau Sauvage. Not confused, not to be confused with the Johnny Depp um, Dior Sauvage cologne that's uh, more recent. This one, uh, Eau Sauvage came out in the 19, I think 1959 or 1960s. Um, and it's like a citrusy, uh, very gentlemanly type uh, cologne scent. I'm going to be using this West Coast Shaving uh, Ancient Stone Collection brush. It's synthetic uh, with this kind of uh, black fan, black wool fan type knot. Um, I think this is a 25 millimeter knot. Um, it's very soft. It's one of the softest synthetic knots that I've used of this uh, style. Um, but it's not floppy by any means. It has some decent backbone to it. Um, but it is a very soft knot. So that's Ancient Stone Collection brush from West Coast Shaving. And then I'll be using the Holy Cow Toner. This is uh, alcohol-free. And as an aftershave um, balm or oil, I'm going to be using this new product that I've been testing out for the past about two weeks now, and that's Good Oleo. Good Oleo is an oil. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So, oh, and last but not least, the bowl. I'm going to be using this shaving bowl. This is a Pereira. The, uh, I'm using as like a loading bowl, lather bowl. It's uh, unbreakable. It's made out of this composite plastic material. It's kind of like a hard plastic. It has a nice flat bottom and some ridges that help build the lather. With that, I'm going to get stuck into it here. And I'm going to be just giving tips as I go along about wet shaving and um, and how to shave if you have sensitive skin. So I'm using about mm, a quarter teaspoon of soap, putting it right in the bowl. <clears throat> So first thing I guess we can talk about is the soap. Or actually, why don't we talk about just an overview, wet shaving in general. Let's say this version of shaving versus shaving with a cartridge razor, you know, which is more of a modern way of shaving. And I'm sure that some people, they can get great shaves with the cartridge razor. Um, but what I will say is one of the reasons why I started out trying wet shaving, straight razor shaving, was I was having pretty lousy shaves with the cartridge razors. I'm spending a lot of money on the carts. But that's a little bit besides the point. The, um, I think straight razor shaving and just wet shaving in general, so even if you're a DE shaver, it holds true. But, and I'm just going back and forth. Actually, you can go around synthetic brush. You can do circles, you can go back and forth and start building that lather. I'm gonna add a little more water to the bowl here. So, I think one of the main issues with cartridge razors and one of the reasons why I was having uh, difficulty and not having good shaves is that the blades are locked in at a certain angle in the cart. So they're all like in one plane. So you can't adjust the angle uh, that you're shaving with. So 
Well, if you're going with the grain, it's probably not going to be a problem. But if you try to go against the grain, you can't really adjust that angle of the blade. You know, a straight razor or even DE SE razors, you can adjust that level. You can adjust the plane that you're approaching. And I'll talk about that later as I go through the different passes. But I think that does offer a very significant advantage for people wet shaving over, let's say, cartridge razor shaving. Okay. So I do have very sensitive skin. A lot of soaps don't work for my skin. I get a lot of burning sometimes when I try different artisan products. So I sample a lot of products before I, I use them whenever I can. That's, I think, a good idea. Um, so that's one of my tips is try to find a soap that works well for your skin. Um, for me, for the most part, I tend to have very, very consistent results when I use soaps that are mostly tallow based soaps and soaps that don't have a super strong scent. That's the general, let's say, trend that works for me in soaps. Uh, tallow based and uh, kind of like a, either a mild or medium scent. I mean, I do like strong scents, like at, like most people, I think, but a lot of times they come away burning my skin. So I've gotten burned a lot of times trying strong scented soaps. So I do appreciate a more mild scented soap. This one is, I would say, like medium, medium to like medium strong. So somewhere maybe like a six or a seven out of 10 cent strength on this Holy Cow soap. Holy Cow, their soaps all work very well for my skin. I haven't had a bad reaction to a Holy Cow soap before. I know that when I use that soap, Holy Cow, either the vegan formula or the new formula that they have that actually has a lot of ingredients. It has donkey milk in it, has lanolin, I know that I'm going to have no issues with the soap as far as burning my skin. So I think that's an important, and I'm just going to go through my shave here to start and talk as I go. Um, so I think that's one of the things you want to do is really find a soap that works well for you. And a lot of times it's so, you know, it might be a, a soap that's more mildly scented, but it might be some ingredients in the soap base that cause irritation. And some of the common ones for people, I'll just mention, sometimes people might have reaction to uh, the coconut oil that's used for in most soaps for the steric acid. So you might want to keep an eye out for that. So soaps that are high And steric acid, even though you know they might be vegan, vegan-based soaps sometimes it can cause irritation, cause tightness. That's a common that's a common issue that people have with shaving soap. Another one would be sensitivities to specific things like lanolin, for example. This soap has lanolin. Luckily, I don't have a sensitivity to lanolin. Works well for me. Lanolin is basically a moisturizer. It's an oil that comes from that comes from the lamb, from the uh, produced for the fur of a lamb. I don't know how it's extracted and used, but um, some people have a sensitivity to lanolin, so that's something to watch out for when you're buying a shaving soap. It's pretty common, commonly used and a lot of shaving soaps. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's, it is hard to narrow down if you're having sensitivities on a specific ingredient. I think really the only way to find out what's gonna work is to 
look out for some of those more common allergens that people have issues with, you know, and just try a lot of products. Sample them when you can. Now the next thing I would say, the another important thing to getting an irritation-free shave is um, your choice of, or your blade, your razor, and the sharpness. So if you have a dull razor, a dull blade, it can cause irritation. Because it's not gonna be slicing efficiently through those hairs. It might be tugging or plucking the hairs out and cause irritation. So make sure, I'm just gonna add a little more water to my bowl. <clears throat> so make sure you've got, make sure you've got a sharp blade. So what I normally do is, especially when I'm, let's say I've just honed a blade, so I'm not, you know, I'm testing out the edge. Um, usually I'll have an, all right guys, sorry for the break in the video. The battery on my phone just died, I had to plug it in. So I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. I think I was saying um, having a sharp edge is important for irritation. So it'll prevent irritation. If you're shaving with a dull razor, you're gonna get irritated. It's gonna pluck the hair out as opposed to slicing through it efficiently. So make sure you have a sharp, a sharp edge. When I'm testing out a new edge, a new razor, you know, I've just uh, honed a razor. Usually I'll have another razor on standby, ready to go in case I'm not satisfied with that edge. You don't want to push through a shave. If you've got a dull razor, same thing goes for DE shaving, SE shaving. You know, just get a new blade or switch out that straight razor for one that you know has a sharp edge. You know, maybe you need to work on that edge a little bit more or it's not perfectly to your liking. Don't push through. Don't be a hero, guys. <clears throat> now, a couple things I felt I forgot to mention in the beginning. I'm just kind of doing this extemporaneously. Um, <clears throat> is the beard prep. So make sure that you, uh, you know, for me, I, like I tend to shave right after I come out of the shower. So my face is nice, moisturized. Um, the hairs are softer. And a little steam from the shower. Uh, you don't want the water to be too hot. Some people go as far as using um, cold water when they shave. They say that it cuts down on the irritation, and it probably does. Um, I just, I like to have a warm lather. I feel like having a warm lather helps relax the face, which also helps with having a more comfortable shave. <clears throat> so here I'm on pass two. And, uh, you know, I actually, let me just uh, talk about one more thing, which is uh, pre-shaves. I don't tend to use pre-shaves. I haven't, I, I've experimented a little bit with it. I don't like how they necessarily might gum up my brush, things like that, if it's an oil, um, and I'm using a natural brush, especially. Um, but I do find that they help with the post-shave, so I think they do help your shave overall, so. It might be a good idea if you're having trouble with your shave to add that extra layer of protection on your face with uh, pre-shave oil or pre-shave product. Um, so another tip for, especially for straight razor shaving or wet shaving in general, is, uh, you know, if I'm going for an irritation free shave, I try to do longer strokes. So uh, less scrubbing, so less going back and forth over the same spot and longer strokes. So, um, you know, a lot of times don't, fit, you know, you don't want to try to get everything on each pass. You know, you're going to have some hair that you don't get, but you're going to pick it up later on a subsequent pass. So just um, don't worry about it. Just shave, do longer strokes when you can. And that'll cut down on irritation. If you're cutting down on the number of times that you're going back over that same spot. And if you do have to go over a spot, a long stroke. If you do have to go over that same spot, then um, make sure you have soap on it. You know, don't 
Uh, don't shave over a spot that doesn't have lather. You can always just add some more lather on your face. Okay. Now I'll talk a little bit about technique. As far as the shaving angle, and I alluded to this a little bit at the beginning of the video. So my general approach when I'm shaving with each pass, you know, one with the grain, across the grain, against the grain. So when I'm going with the grain, you can use a little bit of a steeper angle. So what do I mean by that? So let me just demonstrate on the side of my face. Let's say I'm going down. So this is my with the grain pass. I can have a more, let's see if you can, the camera can pick it up. You can have more of a steep angle. So let's say the blade is at more at like 30, 40% to your face. This is actually more aggressive. So the steeper the angle, the more aggressive, the more shallow or the flatter the blade is to your face, it'll be less, um, less aggressive. <clears throat> you can think about it this way. If you have more steeper angle, you're, it's almost like you're cutting closer to the skin or you're cutting the hair closer at a, at a closer um, uh, level to your skin. So it's more aggressive. So on that first pass, when you're going with the grain, it's okay to have a little bit more aggressive angle or a steeper angle. But as you go across, you can adjust that angle, that angle that you're going against the face. And, uh, you know, so when I did my second pass, I was maybe more at, you know, 30 or 20 to 30%. I mean, it's hard to know exactly what angle you have the blade at. But what I can say is, you know, the general principle, as you're going more, uh, against the grain. So if you're going across or you're going against, you're, you're gradually flattening the angle a little bit. That to me helps with irritation. A lot of times if I go, you can even feel it. So as you're going against the grain, so like this area of my neck, I'm going against the grain. If I go, it's too steep an angle. It'll be tuggy. Sometimes it could feel irritating as I go, but if I flatten that angle out, it'll be a lot smoother. I'll be able to feel it. So that's what you want to do. That'll help with your um, with your shave. So you can customize that angle based on what direction you're going. And I do think that is a big advantage over cart cartridge razor cartridge razor shaving, where those blades are locked into that head of the cart and you can't adjust. I'm going across the grain here, but I'm flattening out the angle of the blade. I'm also stretching. I'm not overstretching. If you overstretch, you might end up with a um, irritating shave. So just stretch enough to give a little traction. Try to keep the muscles of your face relaxed as you stretch the skin. Okay. Now the third and final pass. So this, I think the third pass, the cleanup or the cleanup pass after that, if you do a little cleanup after, I think that's where a lot of people get into trouble with irritation or they're trying to do too much, they're chasing BBS. So like I said, try to avoid scrubbing too much. Now, if you're going for a very close shave, scrubbing is a good technique. But if your goal is you wanna avoid irritation and you just want a very comfortable shave, then again, try to avoid um, going over the same place too much. Try longer strokes. Try to shave with their soap, okay? If you need to reapply, 
let's say I need to get a little bit more into the jawline, just add a little more soap. Not a big deal. Okay. There we go. Nice sharp razor here. I'm just gonna do a dummy pass again in this goatee area. If you're really having a lot of irritation or if you're coming off of a really irritating shave, another trick would be cut out the third pass completely. Most people aren't going to notice that you aren't perfectly BBS. Nobody's going up to your face with a magnifying glass. Okay. I have a little area right here that I like to get against the grain. I'm going to follow my own advice, put a little bit of soap, a little leather right there in that spot, and I'll pull down, pull down with the other hand on my chin, just let the bottom lip go loose. There. There you have it. It's a nice irritation free shave. Oops. Now a little bit about aftershave, aftershave products. So I know I'm in the minority here, but I do tend to prefer alcohol free aftershaves like this one. So this is Holy Cow, their toner it's called. That's an alcohol free toner. It has none of the burn this is also on the same Fern Concerto scent. Really nice, kind of a citrusy smelling one. It's not super strong also. It just feels slick. There's no tightness. There's zero burn, zero burn. So that's the thing. People love alcohol splashes. I don't really understand why. I don't understand why you would want to burn your face after you shave. So using something like this, you still get the nice scent. You get a lot of the, the good properties of some of the ingredients in here. It has glycerin, uh, there's aloe, there's um, you know a lot of nice skin food in here, um, but none of the alcohol that's gonna cause a burn. Alcohol, it's an irritant to the skin. So I know the idea, I think it's probably from a bygone era where they would use alcohol and the idea is it's going to disinfect you know if you're at a, if you're at the barbers and they just shaved 20 people and hygiene was questionable um you know they'd want to use alcohol and they thought it would maybe disinfect everything um this whole idea i think is questionable in itself um I don't know that there's any good studies that show that if you use an alcohol splash, it's gonna prevent, let's say, having a skin infection from a cut or something. Um, and it's probably actually might even be harmful. You know, I mean, you're adding alcohol, which causes inflammation. If you're adding inflammation to your skin, then it breaks down the barrier and you're more likely to get infected actually. So I think it's just a bad idea. It dries your skin out and it causes irritation. So for the same reason, I'm not a fan of using alum. Here's my alum block. 
I do love to use alum, but I like to put a little bit on my fingers when I need, when I have a slippery, uh, using a slippery uh, soap and I want to stretch the skin, I'll put a little bit on my fingers to help stretch. Um, it works like a charm or if you slippery razor, you know, you have soapy hands and you want to hold on to that razor, add a little uh, alum to the fingertips, it will make it very tacky, grippy. Um, but as far as putting it on your face after you shave, I know there are a lot of people who like to do it. Um, they like to the feedback. In other words, they like that feeling, well, I just shaved and I have these kind of micro abrasions on my face. It's gonna, you know, it's causing like a good burn on my face. I think it's a bad idea. I, I don't think you should try to burn your face after you shave it. Um, I know, call me crazy. I'm probably, maybe I'll get some heat from saying that, but. Uh, people feel strongly about their alcohol splash, about their burn, about the alum. If you're looking for an irritation-free shave, avoid alum, avoid alcohol. Uh, that's my advice. And then last but not least, use a great uh, post-shave moisturizer. I usually like to go for something like a, a scentless uh, moisturizer. I've been using this uh, good oleo product. So this is a uh, an oil, I don't think it's specifically done, designed for to be an aftershave. It's more of like a skincare product. Um, this one I've been having very good results with. I use maybe three, four drops total. You really don't need to use more than that. And I just kind of got a little spots all over my face. Um, I've been using it about twice a day after I shave before I go to bed. And it's been really cleaning up. I have dry, patchy skin here, like in this area, uh, on the sides of my nose, and here in the eyebrows, above the eyes. Uh, and it's totally cleared it up. I'm really very, very impressed with this. Um, it does have a bit of a scent from some of the oils. It's like a blend of different oils. Um, some, I think there's, there's a lot of different oils in this. There's olive oil, jojoba oil, essential oils. There's some eucalyptus oil that I think is giving some of the scent. Um, there's cade oil that it kind of has almost like a smoky um, smell to it. So it, they're very mildly scented and I have no trouble putting this on and it doesn't really last. So, you know, maybe it lasts like 15, 20 minutes, the, the actual scent of this. Um, but it's not anything that's jumping up your skin or interfere with your and if you want to put on a scented aftershave. So this one really is ticking all the box for me as far as a post-shave oil or a post-shave um, moisturizer. I like ones that don't have a strong scent or unscented. I like ones that don't clog my pores. So the next day I'm not gonna break out after using it. And, uh, and I don't have any burn or reaction to ingredients in it. So um, this one is taking all the boxes. It looks, when it goes on, uh, your skin looks a little bit shiny, but it dries within like five or 10 minutes and then you don't have that kind of like oily uh, feel anymore. It definitely gets absorbed and you don't have that kind of like a little bit of that shine. So you do have a little bit of a shine right now, but then it kind of gets absorbed after a few minutes. So those are my tips for having an irritation-free shave, which I just most definitely had. Um, let me know if you have any tips of your own or if you have any problems with any tips I gave or you disagree, please post it in the comments. I'd love to go back and forth and hear uh, some people's other ideas of having a irritation-free shave. Uh, thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.